in this lecture we will learn about inverse of a function so we know that a function f from a to b so it's defined so if we have two sets okay so if we have two sets of numbers so there are some elements in the domain so this is the domain of fx okay so fx is a function and what happens is and this is the range okay so there are points in the range and f is basically a mapping from that domain to the range or from a to b and what happens is that in a function for each point in a we should have just one point in a unique point in b okay so this is for a function so a point from a cannot be mapped to more than one points in b okay so this is the function but what happens in a function is that two points from the domain can map to same point in the range okay so for example if fx is x square so it is a perfectly all right function but the thing is f of 1 is 1 and f of minus 1 is also minus 1 square is equal to 1 so two points 1 and minus 1 both are pointing to 1 in the range so if we want to find the inverse of a function so we know that okay function is a mapping from set a to set b okay where every element in a has a unique mapping to b but two points or more points from a can map to the same point in b but for inverse function what happens is that now every point in b also is just mapped to one unique point in a okay so this means that no two points or more points can map to a single point in b so every point in b also is mapped by only one point in a and if this is the case it is called one to one function okay one to one function so what it tells that for each point in a it is mapped only to one point in b okay and for every point in b it is mapped by only one point in a so it is one to one relation so now what happens in that case we can say that so now we have y is equal to fx that for every point x you give from a i can give you the point in b okay which is one single valued unique but now if there is a one to one mapping we can say that also we can find x is equal to g of y so what does this mean you give me some value in y i can map it into value in x a unique value and the property is that f of g of x is equal to x if this is the case then g is called the inverse function of f okay and if g of f of x is also x then f is equal to g inverse okay so what happens is now let's see so we will look at one sufficient condition so sufficient condition for a uh, function y is equal to fx to have inverse
is that it should be monotonic strictly monotonic should be strictly monotonic then it is this condition is sufficient for or uh, inverse function of y is equal to fx to exist okay so why this is so is because let's see if we have a function like y is equal to fx is equal to x so now we know that okay y is equal to x the graph is something like this it is monotonically increasing from left to right so now i can say that okay for different values if x is increasing so for one value of x it will only cut y is equal to fx at one point okay so we see that okay for every y is equal to fx you will only find one x and similarly for each x you will only find one f of x so this tells that this is sufficient condition for a function to have an inverse but it's not necessary okay necessity it's not necessary so and you can try to think of this as an example try to find where a function is not strictly monotonic but it has a inverse okay so now we will look at one problem very simple one so let's see so y is equal to 5x plus 7 okay if this is the function so f of x is equal to 5x plus 7 so now we see that this function again this is monotonically increasing because it's a straight line so what happens so we know that fx is strictly monotonically increasing so monotonically increasing so spelling might be incorrect so this is monotonically increasing hence it must have a inverse and strictly monotonically in function have inverse so now what we can write now try to get x from this equation try to get y is equal to fx from this now try to get x in terms of g of y so this will be the inverse so if we try like that so we see that okay y minus 7 5x is this so x is 1 by 5 y minus 7 so this is the inverse okay and it will be so g of x is the inverse and it is equal to 1 by 5 x minus 7 so now to verify if we put so f of g of x should be equal to x so if we put like this here so f of g of x what will happen so fx is 5 x plus 7 so f of g of x will become what it will become 5 into 1 by 5 x minus 7 plus 7 so it will be x minus 7 plus 7 which is x so we say that okay x gx is equal to 1 by 5 x minus 7 is the inverse function okay and we write it okay so this is one example next